Oh, welcome to question 81 of the Secunda Secunde. Uh, the topic for today is religion uh, in itself. Uh, and I am Dr. Ivo. Um, we're dealing with, under the section of justice, the potential parts of justice. So we're now getting into all the different parts of it, uh, the elements of it. Uh, this first section is on religion it, itself, and it goes from question 81 to uh, 100. So a big section here. Piety is quite short, and equity uh, is quite short. So religion and observance are our two big sections here in the parts of justice. When we're dealing with religion in itself. Um, we're dealing with the word religio. Uh, and uh, the question is, what? Well, what is religio? Uh, well, you know, in pop culture, we, we have a certain amount of people. Pretty much everyone has, has a, their own definition of what it is uh, to be religious uh, or what religion is. Uh, some people have a very negative image of religion. Some people have a very positive image of religion. Some people feel very disconnected from religion. Um, People tend to think about religion in terms of an institution. However, uh, I think to understand religion as a virtue, we have to look to St. Thomas as uh, for our example. Uh, St. Thomas is using Cicero, who he calls Tully. Um, religion consists in offering service and ceremonial rites to a superior nature uh, that men call divine. So that, that is contra argument uh, for uh, religion as a virtue uh, and what is religion. Uh, it's two parts to this definition uh, once Thomas answers um, from the root words um, people are trying to, even in the ancient times, trying to figure out where did this word come from, this relig religio. Uh, so St. Thomas quotes uh, St. Isidore of Seville who is analyzing Cicero again, uh, and Cicero had said uh, really jetit, uh, which is to read again, uh, or uh, he also says in there, to seek again. And I think this minds, you know, this kind of idea is, um, you know, to meditate upon the scriptures, to meditate upon the, the words of the rituals, um, to, Reflect on it again uh, to meditate on the words. Uh, one might say, you know, meditate upon the words of the mass. It would be religious. Uh, it's not. I think it's kind of smart in saying, it, you know, it's not the simple uh, reciting of the words. You know, a person could recite the words without any. Right. That there were things like the uh, liberal Catholic Church at one point where they. They were essentially atheists, but they really thought they really loved liturgy. <laughs> so they, they thought the way from kind of become God themselves was to just practice the liturgy, even though they really had no Christology themselves. Um, that would be that kind of you know rote idea that the, the ritual itself is magical in some ways, versus this kind of religedit, uh, which has this idea of kind of reading the ritual again, meditating upon the words of perhaps scripture or the ritual. Uh, I think there is something to that. The image I get with it is something a little bit like um, Lexio Divina, right? To practice that kind of meditative prayer on the words uh, uh, would be, I think, in line with what St. Isidore and Cicero are talking about when it comes to the root of the term religion. Um, the second definition is perhaps more popular, and it comes from St. Augustine, uh, religiare, uh, which is to, to bind, um, to bind together. Now, this is often seen in a very negative way by pop culture, you know, this idea that, you know, are you religious? Well, the heart of religion is to bind people, like they're slaves or something like that. Well, that's not what the spiritual meaning would be of that, clearly. Uh, but to bind oneself uh, to God is St. Augustine's interpretation. Uh, may religion bind us to the, the one almighty God. Uh, you 
kind of see it as yoking yourself uh, to, to God. Uh, this is uh, probably the more popular approach. Um, but both, whatever the root of where the word uh, religion came from, the idea is that it aims at uniting human beings with God in some type of service that, that is at the heart of either one of them. Um, religious acts, uh, when we look at uh, Article 1, uh, St. Thomas says religion has two types of, uh, two kinds of acts. Uh, one is the proper, and uh, that's the immediate acts, which directs uh, the worshiper to God alone. And those acts uh, include sacrifice and adoration. And in, in the uh, in his responses, he also talks about uh, latria, which is the Greek term of uh, worship of God alone. Um, these are direct forms of a religious act. Uh, we still use these terms today, so I think that they don't need much further explanation. Uh, and we touch on them in the later parts of uh, religion as a virtue. Uh, the second one is acts which use uh, the medium, use the medium of virtue. So um, the medium of religion as a virtue. So the uh, the end commands the means in this situation. So a person who uh, volunteers at the food pantry, for example, uh, because they are a Christian, because Christ said, uh, what it, whoever gives uh, a cup of water to one of the little ones, you know, a poor person gives it to me. Uh, whatever you do to the least of my people, you do to me. Uh, I was hungry and you fed me. I was thirsty and, and you gave me drink. Uh, I was a stranger and you welcomed me. So if your faith uh, then lead you to do these other uh, good things, these other means, uh, because of your devotion to the end, which is God, uh, then this is also considered a religious act. Now, somebody could do something quite similar and it not be a religious act because that is not their end, uh, right? So if a person they, uh, <laughs> gave food to a hungry person, but it wasn't because of their relationship with God, well, that would still be a good act of charity, uh, but it wouldn't be a religious act of justice, right? So uh, it's all how the intention is designed. Uh, the examples that St. Thomas used was uh, to visit the fatherless and the widow and to keep oneself unspotted, uh, unblemished, would be a part of also worshiping God, your own purity, uh, is aimed at a devotion to God since you are the dwelling place of the Holy Spirit. Okay. Looking at uh, at uh, I missed a comma in the, in the in the citation. It should be Article uh, two and three, not thirty two. There is no uh, Article uh, thirty two. <laughs> um, that should be obvious. Um, is religion a virtue is, quite, is Article 2, and is religion a uh, single virtue, Article 3? They really kind of go together since Article 3 is fairly short. So uh, virtue is that which makes the possessor good, and his act good likewise. So if a person uh, does good, they're, they're participating in virtue. Every good act, act belongs to, vir to a virtue. Uh, therefore, if religion is a good act, therefore it is a virtue, and definitionally so. Uh, and well, why would religion be a good act is the next question that St. Thomas answers. And it's this idea that we discussed, uh, discussed this previously, but we'll go back uh, into it. Uh, religion attempts to pay uh, honor due to God. So, uh, if you don't remember this, go back to the potential parts, uh, question 80. But uh, religion attempts to pay honor due to God. So God is owed um, respect, and thanks, um, and honor, and devotion um, because that's within God's nature. And we should be, as creators of his creation, we should be thankful uh, and give honor to God. 
Uh, now, there's no way to perfectly give honor to God, um, but it, religion is an attempt to give honor to God, and our attempt is the best we can do, um, which is why we depend upon grace. Uh, but it, it's still, even though our our thanks is insufficient, uh, it is more sufficient to attempt to give thanks to God than to not attempt to give thanks to God. Um, St. Thomas says in Article 3, there are many religious habits, but there is only one object, God. So the, you, can, you can honor God, you can respect God, you can do many different types of activities as a result of uh, the virtue of religion. It doesn't matter that one person might do the rosary and another person does the... Uh, uh, Lexio Divina, it doesn't really matter which one one does, it doesn't become a different virtue. Um, they're a different act, but not a different, but they're not a different virtue because they are both directed at the end uh, and the object of God. So because they, they, they're they both intending the same uh, purpose, they're, they're, they're the same, uh, it's only one virtue. You're not going to have the virtue of the rosary and the virtue of the mass, the virtue of and it's, the, it's, it's all part of the virtue of religion. Uh, St. Thomas also mentioned that there are religious, which uh, are people who are consecrated to God's service entirely, to the forsaking of the world, uh, that they, they are entirely, but this isn't uh, essential to religion. There are people who can practice the virtue of religion without um, being a religious, which is obvious. Uh, Religion is a special virtue, um, Article 4. Uh, and this is because um, if you were just saying be good to one another, uh, in some ways that's a general virtue, right? Uh, or uh, uh, legal justice, right? Le the law uh, aims at the common good. So in some sense, that's general. But if you're saying uh, this is special service uh, to God, well, now this isn't to all people, it's to God. Um, worship only goes to God. Uh, we can honor our neighbor, we can have uh, respect for our neighbor, we can we can have all types of other uh, good virtues towards our neighbors, but to God alone goes worship, therefore this is a very special virtue. One is not religious towards other human beings, one is religious to um, uh, to him, special honor is due. Uh, he gives other things to other people, but to God, religion is due. Um, is religion a theological virtue, right? You would tend to think, well, religion sounds awfully religious. Maybe it's theological. Well, no, faith, faith hope, and love are the theological virtues. Religion is not one of the three theological virtues. Why not? Well, because... Uh, faith, hope, and love uh, are infused virtues, uh, and this is a moral virtue, so it's not the same type of virtue, for one. Um, it's not, religion is not an infused virtue. Uh, and two, uh, faith, hope, and love aim at the object of God, God as the uh, object of it, um, versus religion is not aiming at possessing God himself, it presumes that God exists. So in some sense, you're not going to have religion without faith, hope, and love. Faith, hope, and love are um, the foundation uh, first. You have to first have faith, hope, and love. And then out of faith, hope, and love comes uh, religion, which would then uh, aim at the ends uh, of God. Uh, but it's aiming at uh, worship of God. It's aiming at reverencing God. Um, it's not aiming at believing in God. Um, you already have that through faith. Uh, it just aims at serving God. So serving God can be different than um, faith, hope, and love. Although if you have faith, hope, and love, you serve God. So, um, but that's indirectly rather than this one. The focus of, of, of religion directly is the reverence of God.
And uh, St. Thomas points out here this nice line um, from his response to article uh, from Objection 3. Um, Religion aims at equality in consideration of man's ability and God's acceptance. So again, justice always aims at uh, equality. So uh, man tries to serve God, uh, but it only goes to the degree in which man is able to serve God and God is willing to accept the service. Um, but then in that, there is a, a justice. Not perfect justice, right? Because this is also a potential uh, potential part of justice. It's not a perfect part of justice. We already discussed a perfect part of justice um, earlier. Um, which one was that? Was that fifty eight or something? I think. Um, but we looked at different parts of justice, and, and this was not. This is a potential part of justice. Uh, religion. Uh, uh, is the chief of the moral virtues. Uh, so other virtues aim at honoring God indirectly, right? So if you practice truth, you are essentially honoring God by telling the truth and not being a liar. But this is good, you know, but it's, that serves God indirectly versus religion, which aims at serving God directly. So because this aims at the service of God, um, right, we can serve God through serving our neighbor, kind of indirectly serving God through serving our neighbor. Um, this is serving God directly. Therefore, it is the highest good because that is um, that is proper. Now, the objection to Article One, I Art, Article One objection, no. <laughs> Article Six objection one. Sorry, uh, I, an interesting one, and it's saying. Well, you know, God really doesn't need anything from us. So, you know, when we reference God, if we worship God, we adore God. Uh, it doesn't affect much, right? Because what does God gain by that? Nothing. So wouldn't our time better be spent serving our neighbor, particularly those who are the poorest, right? So should you spend an hour in adoration or should you spend an hour in the food pantry. Um, right, we're, now we're getting back to this image in scripture of uh, the woman washing uh, Jesus's feet with her hair in the precious nard oil. Um, you know, is that that one year's worth of wages uh, uh, of oil better spent on the poor? Uh, and if you recall, Jesus's response was, I'm only here for a short time. You better enjoy me while I'm here. Um, the poor will always be among you. I think there's a similar answer in here. Um, uh, and it's that justice uh, is about giving each one his due. Uh, what is due to them? Well, who is owed the most? Who, who do we owe the most to? Well, God. <laughs> God, we have the greatest debt. If it weren't for God, it wouldn't exist. Well, I owe God quite a bit then, because if I owe God my existence, I don't have anything other. If I don't, if God isn't there, then I don't have anything. Uh, so I owe God the most. So justice is not about who has the greatest need. It's like the poor. It's about it's about equalizing that which is the greatest debt. Uh, that, which who the, who, who the most is due to. Because of that, then we then turn to uh, religion, right? Reli religion is giving uh, to God because God is the one who is owed the most from us. Um, it doesn't mean we shouldn't serve the poor, but you can't say, well, I never have to pray. I never have to do any of the, you know, the they practice the virtue of religion because there's always somebody who is poorer that I should be spending my time on. Like Judith's complaining about the woman washing Jesus' feet, there's usually ulterior, ulterior motives uh, and not a pure love of the poor. Um, uh, does religion have external acts? Uh, Article 7. And, and uh, I think quite obviously from Catholic faith, you would always have to say 
some degree of yes <laughs> when you're dealing with uh, with virtues because a very little exists only in an interior sense. We are not um, spiritual beings. Um, we are uh, fully human and fully spiritual. I mean, in words, body and soul, uh, we're both. So <clears throat> proper spiritual practice requires both interior and exterior. Um, uh, St. Thomas uses the line for the contra argument, my heart and flesh have rejoiced in the living God. Right? My heart, the interior, and my flesh, the exterior. Uh, they always go hand in hand, but then Catholicism, uh, St. Thomas says, we pay God honor and reverence not for his sake, but for our own sake. Uh, when we revere and honor God, our minds are subjected to him and the body flow follows uh, the mind secondarily. So the, the most important thing in terms of uh, the virtue of religion is an internal disposition, right? an internal prayer, praise of God. So what would be the higher, higher forms of worship, prayer, devotion, adoration, letizia? These are really internal things we might do them in certain places but they really are an internal disposition because really religious ritual without the internal is very little has very little uh, and as saint augustine points out in the city of god the visible sacrifice of the sacraments or sacred signs of uh, our sacred signs of the invisible sacrifice right? the, the sacraments are about uh, an external, uh, visible sign of our internal disposition. There's, an, there's something internal going on. There's nothing internal going on within the, the sacramental life of the church. Then nothing is going on. Right? <laughs> uh, the body serves the soul in this regard. Um, it's not the, the soul without the body or the body without the soul. They go together. But what is of the higher priority is that internal position that has more uh, importance. The last question, Article 8, is uh, it's kind of a funny question, but is religion and sanctity the same thing? And now, when most of the time when these questions are asked, the answer is usually no. <laughs> and it's strongly about distinctions, uh, how they're not the same. In this one, it's surprisingly yes, in some way. They, they are almost the same. So sanctity, uh, St. Thomas says, has two, uh, two parts to it. One is purity, uh, which he uses the Greek hagios, which means unsoiled. So the first part of sanctity is another term for holiness, uh, for uh, this example, um, purity. Uh, then the other one is firmness. And the firmness part of sanctity. Well, say firmness coming from Santa, which uh, meant went a ratification of the law. You know, before it's a spiritual term, it's kind of a legal term. Uh, I mean, the ratification of the law, the following of the law, the enforcement of the law. So what is holiness? Uh, purity, keeping yourself pure, and, uh, with, and maintaining the law, right? Ratifying the law. So these are the two parts of sanctity. Um, St. Thomas says, therefore, sanctity withdraws from the interior things and directs the actions towards God's. Well, this is the same as religion. Right? Religion uh, deals with withdraws from the interior, the inferior things and directs its attention towards the service of God, right? Religion is the virtue which directs us to proper respect towards God. So uh, this is very similar. Uh, sanctity uh, includes divine worship, which is religion, um, but it, uh, plus it also includes other virtues, which I think is, is a bit of the distinction. Um, other things can also be sanctity other than the worship of God, uh, I think that falls more under the ratifying of the law, the firmness. Um, 
what St. Thomas says is sanctity differs from religion logically, but not in reality. <laughs> um, they both aim at the proper respect of God. If you recall from the earlier um, articles, purity uh, and uh, right intentions were, were part of that. Well, it's very similar to sanctity, so, uh, which could also be called holiness. So is holiness and religion the same? In terms of being them being virtues, in some ways they are. In some ways they're very synonymous with each other. So in conclusion, to resummarize these eight articles, um, religion is directed at uh, at what is due to God. Uh, religion is a virtue since all uh, good acts are virtues. Uh, religion is a single virtue with many habits. Um, religion is a special virtue since it is directed as a unique um, to as a unique object, which is God. Not to the general good, but to God specifically. Uh, religion is not a theological virtue because its end is not the possession of God, but uh, the reverence, just to reverence God, you know, to allow God be, to be God and to reverence God. Um, it's also a moral virtue rather than uh, and an infused virtue. Religion is uh, the chief moral virtue not in to mediate its goodness towards God, but its direct purpose is to aim at reverence towards God. That's its direct purpose. Uh, religion has both internal and external actions, the internal being more important, having that in interior disposition, but both are important. And uh, as a sign of that, we are soul and body. You know, therefore, we live in the spirit and we live in the flesh, right? And, of the incarnation, right? It's an incar incarnational religion, therefore, re uh, religion is also um, incarnational as a virtue. Uh, religion and sanctity are the same in reality, but different logically. It's a different way of getting there, but you're essentially talking about the same thing, uh, which is purity and following the law and giving uh, justice, in doing. Uh, Giving what is due uh, to the right, um, the right proportions, which would be equality. So this is uh, all we have now for uh, question eighty-one. The next topic is devotion, which has four articles, which will come across, across as very short, since the one that follows that uh, prayer is the longest uh, section in chapter three. It has seventeen articles. That one will be a long one. Luckily, the good thing about the long one being prayer is that the questions and articles are really great within it, and I think very illuminating. So at least uh, if we don't have 17 uh, articles on uh, religion in itself, right? It's, it is not. Uh, at least uh, this prayer will be more interesting when it comes to the many articles associated with so that's all I have. So I will see you next time.